What's going on, guys? Welcome to this very special Odyssey Live. My name is Brew, and today we have the honor of having the one and only Ed Sheeran here. How are you doing? I'm all right, yeah. Enjoying New York summer. Yeah. Hence the shorts. Yeah, I know. I made the mistake. I was thinking of wearing trousers, but I was just like, it's too humid to try and be smart. You're drenched right when you walk out the door. In it's, it. it's a it's a lose lose. Yeah. But yeah. It's good to see you. It's good to have you here. How has life been recently? It's been good. Yeah, it's been good. I kind of don't. F I'm on tour, but I don't feel like I'm on tour because I'm mm. sort of based in one place and flying out for weekends. So, um, yeah, it feels good. The crowds have been great. Just did Detroit. Had Eminem out. That was oh. mental. Um, and then off to Nashville this weekend, which is where I lived for a couple of years so yeah i'm really enjoying being back in the states yeah absolutely do you make music when you're touring or are you just like taking a break from it no i do studio monday tuesday wednesday every week mm -hmm. um that's just a routine so yeah i made i've been in studio today gotcha and what's life like when you kind of take that break like when you're done with all this stuff what you what's gonna be on the bucket list of things to do i don't take breaks mm -hmm. because i don't see this as work this is like i love I see this as work, like interviews and travel and all of that, but like studio and gigs that aren't work for me. So yeah. I w I, it would feel weird taking a break from a hobby. Absolutely. You know? Another one of the hobbies is art, obviously. Um, any projects you've been working on lately? No, I bought a, uh, I bought a pig shed that oh. I'm going to do some painting in. Um, but I need to get home and, and do it. But mm -hmm. it's just a big corrugated iron warehouse, basically. So it's like you're painting it as a chore or is it like art's going inside of it? Oh, no, no. I say, I'm going to paint some art in it. I got you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're just doing this like a yeah. task on the list. No, no, no. Oh, I didn't amazing. just buy a pig shed to paint. <laughs> in it. Well, congrats on everything. The new album, the documentary. Um, sitting with the album a little bit. Is there any song that like of yours is your favorite? I like No Strings. It's like the penultimate song. But really, I kind of see the album as like one thing. And mm -hmm. yeah, I understand it's not like an album that people like lift weights to in the gym. And it's, you know, it lives in its own space. It is whatever, what, however it fits into someone's life is how it fits into someone's life. It's not a, an album that's going to be played in clubs and cars or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you've said on songs before where you might have mixed feelings on them, like Shape of You or Bad Habits. Is there any of those on this album that you kind of felt that way about? No, no. And I don't think I ever had mixed feelings on Bad Habits either. I feel like, um, I feel like my fans had mixed feelings on Bad Habits. And yeah, I never trust initial reactions because... Everything that I've ever put out that people hate instantly, mm. like a year later, it, you know, but I close my shows with Bad Habits now and I play Shape of You before that. So I don't, yeah, I, I think in, instant knee-jerk reactions are never, I, yeah, I just don't trust them. Don't take them to heart. Absolutely. We well, said you're out here for a little bit in New York, you're doing the tour. What's life like um, when you're in America compared to at home? You put on more weight. Yeah. Portion sizes are bigger. Heat, there's a lot of heat. Um, your beer is terrible. <laughs> But other than that, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It really is, though. No. You were in London. Like, you got to admit, the beer over there is better. It was a little bit more potent, is yeah. what I would say. Okay. But yeah, it was a good time. <laughs> Getting to sit, too, and have a little more time with the sum of it all, the documentary you did, um, how do you feel about it now? It, I, it's not really on my radar anymore, to be honest. I mean, it was so, like, in... Uh, it was so a lot when we were filming it, and then it was, you know, we filmed it, they edited it, then it came out, and... I, it's much like an album. You sort of put it out and it just is what it is. Like mm -hmm. people might come back to that in 10 years time and discover it for the first time. Or yeah, I find the, what I've always done in my career is just make stuff, put it out, make stuff, put it out, make stuff, put it out and just move forward. I never really dwell too much on it because I don't know, a career is a career. So yeah, I, I love the documentary, but I haven't really thought about it since it's come out to be mm -hmm. honest. Well, the fans have been loving what you've been putting out, including uh, Chris Hemsworth, who had a fangirl moment yeah. with you the other day. What's that relationship like? Do you know, I met him, we have a mutual friend. Well, we have a few mutual friends, but I met him in Australia. I was staying in Byron Bay and he was just like, oh, just come around to the house. So I went around to the house with my wife and kids and he's got wife and kids and blah, blah, blah. So we hung out on like a wholesome level and then we went out, the two of us, and he's an absolute maniac. Same as me. So we yeah. got on very well. So it's quite nice to have someone you can get on with on both levels. Um, but yeah, he's really cool. Extraction 2's amazing. Extraction 1's great as well. Have you seen him? Yeah, so yeah. Both. yeah. So, so many bullets. So, so many gunshots. Yeah, yeah. I fell asleep to it and I woke up instantly because it was just a barrage. <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel like he's the new Arnie, you know? Yeah. Australian Arnie. Wow. It's a cool guy to have fangirl over you, Thor and... The extraction. Well, I man. fangirl over him as well, so it's like mutual yeah. fangirling. Yeah. Is there anyone you haven't met that you would like kind of fangirl a little bit if you finally got the chance to speak to? Yeah, I love sports, so sport. 
stuff. I don't know, really. Yeah, I, I yeah, I think I feel like as a musician, I've I'm never starstruck meeting musicians. I, I'm always starstruck meeting sports people. Same always, way. yeah. It Absolutely. just it's because it's such a foreign thing. Yeah, to, it's like you, you know, do what I cannot even come close to doing. Precisely, yeah, and it's such a sk- and it's such an intense skill that is only mastered for like 15 years, mm-hmm. and then it's then it's gone. Then it's like on to the next person. So it's it's a real, real like I'm, I have a lot of respect for it. Well, I'm so excited for our fans to see this Odyssey live. We're in such an intimate space. Like now, do you prefer if you get the chance to do those small like venues that are intimate, or do you still just stadiums or what you'd love to be at? Uh, I think variety is the spice of life, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, you could have steak every day of the week and sometimes you want a salad, sometimes you want a burger, sometimes you want a taco. You know, like it's, I I see it like that. Playing stadiums all the time, even though it's an amazing thing, probably would get boring. So it's nice to do small, medium, big, really intimate. Like it's nice to have a, I just love performing. I'm not, ju- I'm, I haven't got like a stadium supremacy mindset of just like i only play stadiums i like playing everywhere like i played the blue note cafe last night with my friends like to 100 people it's a blast well while you're on the road you know working on music and stuff i'm so curious about your songwriting process like how does that kind of start i was interested to learn how some people you know are so keen on sticking with the lyrics and starting with those even for dance tracks so how does your process kind of start uh it's more of a scattergun approach i write like three songs a day every day and some of them are good and some of them aren't i don't know i know artists that spend like months and months and months on one song and that song will be released and become a hit whereas i'll write lots of songs and one of them will eventually be a hit i just i don't i just write a lot of songs Mm -hmm. yeah we've always been keen too on supporting the next generation of like songwriters and musicians and really being like a you know a helping hand is there anyone that you've like had your eye on lately uh, I mean, Maisie Peters is great. She's playing Radio City in a couple of weeks, uh, which is cool. Um, I don't know, really. I've had, I mean, mostly, I mean, I've, it's been Khalid as the main support act on my tour, but all of the people who were on before Khalid are musicians that are up and coming that I love. There's Dylan, there's Cat Burns, there's Rosalind, there's Maisie, there's Griff. Like, there's, yeah, just keep, I just keep my eye out. Mm-hmm. Well, you scrapped a ton of music on the new album just to kind of better reflect your life, you know, what was going on and everything. Will we ever hear that music? Like, is that something you would use on a future project? Yeah, totally, totally. I think the, the, the well, not the problem, but like the thing is with music at the moment is if you release too much of it, people don't listen to it because you have to give people, you have to make something matter for people to listen to it. Be like, this is an album and you should listen to it and this matters. If I just put out an album every single month, people will be, They'd listen to one of them or then maybe this one or maybe this one, but they're not going to listen to to all of it. So you have to really wait. So you, people will hear, hear it, but not in the next six months. Mm-hmm. Well, looking ahead to whatever you're going to do next, you said another set of symbol albums will be what's coming up. Um, is there anything you can like talk to about that or, or what you're kind of planning? Uh, I'm planning to, I'm planning an interesting rollout of it. I feel like the, I don't understand the music. Every time I work out the music industry, it changes. So I kind of want to do my own thing rather than try and do the traditional thing. So the next thing that comes out will be something that hasn't been done before, I guess. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You talk about the music industry changing. Have you seen anything about AI, you know, like within music? Like on TikTok, I swear I'll hear features from artists where they didn't even do it. And it sounds so real. What I don't understand about AI is like for the last 60 years, Hollywood movies have been telling you, don't do it. And now everyone's doing it. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, have you not seen the movies where they kill us all? And it... And- <laughs> Also, like, why do you, like, I just don't know why you need it. Like, why, there's, there's just certain things, like, why, if it, like, if, 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 if you're taking a job away from a human being, I think that's probably a bad thing, because then the world is just going to be, r- r- the whole point of society is we all do Absolutely. jobs and do the things. If, you, if everything is done by robots, there's just, everyone's going to be out of work. So I just, I just find AI a bit weird. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but, you know. Chat GPT, <laughs> yeah. fucking why not? Why not? Well said. Well, we're at the Hard Rock Hotel in New York City, of course. Um, memorabilia is so iconic to so many people. Is there any one of yours, like a guitar or uh, a wardrobe maybe, that is special to you? I don't know. I sort of I, I sort of gave everything to charity a couple of years ago, so I, I sort of wish I'd hung on to some stuff. I have the suit from Bad Habits and stuff, but... 
Oh, I've got the puppet from the Sing video. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, some some stuff. I don't really know. Like, I've, I've got more memorabilia of other people's stuff at mm -hmm. my house. Like, I, cl I collect film props. Um, I bought the uh, Peter Pan's costume from Hook and Rufio's <laughs> sword and the Hook from Hook. I like, yeah, I like film props. AI yeah, can't do that. Can't oh, I've, got, I've got the teddy bear from AI. Oh. Artificial intelligence, yeah. It's coming full circle. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I watched that the other day, and I was like, see? Spielberg <laughs> and Kubrick were trying to tell us something. Yeah. Thank you for being here at the Thank Hard Rock you. Hotel, New York City. Odyssey Live with Ed Sheeran. Hopefully you enjoyed the show in this interview. And thank you so much again for stopping by. Thank you by. so much. Nice Appreciate one. it. Thank you.